Hello there, Michelle Short here and I'm delighted to be joining you today on the MFTV YouTube channel. Today I'm creating two fold up tags using the new Holiday Penguin set. So I'm starting off by stamping two of the penguins from the Holiday Penguins stamp set. I absolutely adore this set, it's just so so cute those adorable penguins. And I'm going to stamp them down onto some smooth white cardstock using extreme black ink. This ink is really great for lots of different mediums, but in particular Copic markers, which is what I'm going to be using to colour in my images. So I'm just pressing down in the misty here. It does look like I'm pressing down really hard. I'm really not. And I want to stamp this a couple of times just to make sure that I get a really nice dark impression. And that's where the misty is really helpful for this. So just stamping that down. And then I can colour in the images using Copic markers. I do apologise that my camera didn't catch the first part of this, but I'm blocking in where my darkest shade would be on the penguins. And this is the BV29 colour. I really like using the blue violets for penguins. Although greys work really nicely for penguins as well because you want like a quite dark shade more kind of going towards black rather than grey I do find that these blue violets these darker shades I just really like the tone of them and I think that they work really nice for penguins so just blocking in that darkest colour with the BV29 and then I'm going to go in with the BV25 and just blend that out further I did get a little bit over the line there on his is it an arm? <laughs> I was going to call it a paw then, but I think it's, I'm assuming it's an arm. There is obviously, I'm sure, a proper way to say a penguin's arm, but it's the penguin's arm. So I'm just using that BV29 and then I'm going to go in here with the colourless blender and I'm just pushing that colour back into the image. And that's a really great thing that you can do with Copic markers and the colourless blender. And it did pretty much get rid of all of that colour outside of the lines. And then I can go in with my lightest shade, which is the BV23 and just blend that completely out altogether. And that I think gives a really nice kind of shading on these penguins and although it's not black I think they do kind of show up as black but with a little bit slight warmth to it even though violets generally are more on the cool tone. Next I'm going to go in with the BV20 and I'm just adding a slight amount of colour just around the edges of the penguins tummies here. I just want a bit of extra shading. I don't want to leave it completely white, but I'm going to add just a very small amount here. And then I do go in with the colorless blender just to blend that out. And then I want to add an extra bit of warmth onto these penguins and I'm going to use some yellows for that. I know not all penguins have this kind of yellow on them, but I do really like adding that. And I'm using Y11, Y000 and Y quadruple zero for that. So I'm adding the darkest shade right at the bottom and then blending it out with the mid-tone shade and then using the lightest shade at the top. And then I do go in with the colorless blender just to blend that out to white. And then I felt that I lost a little bit of the definition of around the outside so I'm going back in with that BV20 just to again add a little bit more darkness just around those edges and then I also do the same for the faces as well and then for the feet and the beaks I'm using YR24 and YR31 such tiny little areas I felt that I could just get away with two shades of colour for this and then for the white parts on the hat, I'm using C3, C1 and C00. And then for the hats themselves, I'm using some pink shades on one of the penguins. So this one here is R85, R83 and R81. And these colours match quite nicely with the pattern paper that I'm using. So just blending out here with that lightest shade. And then for the other penguin, I'm using some aqua shades. So I'm using BG15, BG13, BG11 and BG10. So I added in the BG13 first and then added a little bit of extra darker colour with the BG15. And then I'm using the BG11 and mine is quite dry so it's not blending out as well as I'd hoped. But I'm just going over it a couple of times and I think it worked out okay in the end. And then using the BG10 just to blend that out completely. 
I really love these um, shades of colour and then that's the penguins coloured in and I'm going to use the coordinating holiday penguins dynamics so I'm just placing them over the images and then I can hold them down with some low tack tape and then run those through the die cutting machine and then I can just pop them out over the other side and I really love these cute penguins like I said they're just absolutely adorable so next to create my tags I'm using the fold up tags dynamics and I'm using the bottom layer and cut that from some white cardstock and then for two of the top layers I'm using the Christmas cheer 6x6 paper pad and I'm using their really pretty pink colour paper and then also the aqua one and I thought they kind of look like sky so the pink one looks like there's snow falling and then this aqua one here with the snowflakes and what I thought was that the bottom piece would kind of look like snow so I kept that white and here I'm just working out where I want my sentiment to be so I want the sentiment to be covered up by the top flap of the tag and so I'm just using that top piece there just to work out where I want to stamp it and these sentiments here are from the mini merry messages set they fit really nicely on these tags so I'm just going to stamp those down with some extreme black ink again I did think about using colour ink like the colours that match the tags I think that would work really nicely but ultimately in the end I did just decide to use black I quite like sentiments in black so just again double stamping that just to make sure that I get a nice impression and then for the other tag I'm using the sentiment that reads merriest Christmas again just stamping that down twice and then I can assemble my tags together so for this top piece I just want to add adhesive right at the top of the tag there's kind of like a score line that um, die cuts out when you cut them and then you can just add the glue on the top of that and I'm using a combination of some tape runner and then the on point precision glue and then I can just place that over the top and that liquid glue just gives me a little bit of time just to wiggle it around just to make sure that I've got enough time to stick it down properly and then I'm just going to grab an acrylic block here just to hold that down while the glue dries and then I can just do the same thing with the other tag here I really love these tags that you can fold the top part over and I think it works really nicely for this kind of design um, but also just having the message inside which is really nice um, I probably will write a personal message maybe on the back of the tag rather than on the inside um, I'm not sure how much space I will have on the inside but you definitely could if you had small handwriting <laughs> So I've just stuck those down and then there's a few different options for the top of the tag in this set. I decided to cut these kind of like tab bits here with some black licorice cardstock just making sure where that's going to fit on the top of the tag if I'm happy with it and then once I'm happy I can add some more on point precision glue and those two bits are going to sandwich inside the tag or the tag is going to sandwich inside of the little bit on the top I should say. So just adding a fair amount of glue there you don't need too much but I want to make sure that it's going to stick really nicely and then I can just fold that over and I'm going to make sure that it looks nice from the front and from the back so making sure that it kind of lines up with those holes in the tag and then once I've figured out the correct placement I'm just going to grab a pokey tool here and just run that through the inside just to make sure that any little pieces of cardstock or anything like that where it's been die cut I can just get rid of those and also helps to line everything up as well if it's not quite completely straight so just doing the same there with the other tag just making sure that it's going to open and close easily as well and then I can just take some twine and then I can just add that onto the top of the tags what I really like about these tags is you can use lots of different things to add on the top but they all they look really nice even if you don't add anything on the top like ribbon or twine or anything like that so they're really versatile tags but for these ones I just wanted some twine at the top so I'm fiddling around with this for about 45 minutes not quite but it did seem like it um, it does take me some time to fiddle around with bows 
but once I'm happy I can set that aside and then do the same with the other tag and then I've cut some snowflakes from silver sparkle cardstock these are the sweet snowflake flakes set and this is the free with $60 purchase this month so like I said I've cut those from silver sparkle cardstock and I'm just using some more of the on point precision glue just to add small dabs of that onto the back of the snowflakes I can remove the excess and then I want to have them so that they're behind like partially behind the penguins so I'm just using the penguins there just to help me out with the placement and I think they just add a little bit of sparkle onto the tags. Next, I'm going to adhere the penguins with some foam tape, but I want to have them overhanging the front panel of the tag and I don't want to accidentally shut the tag together. So I'm just making sure that the foam tape is going to be high enough up. And then once I'm happy with the placement of the foam tape, I can just remove the backings of that and then stick those down. My thought process on the design of these tags was to look like the penguins are standing on a snowbank at the bottom. So that's why I kept the back of the tag white and then the pattern paper kind of looks like the sky above. I thought that that would work quite nicely. So I'm just adhering those down on top and for this one here there was a little bit of excess foam tape showing through so I'm just going to peel that back up and cut a little bit of the excess foam tape and then stick those back down and then once you do open the tags you do see a little bit of the bleed through from the Copic markers personally it didn't really bother me too much but if you did want to cover that up you could cut another of the penguin dies just as it is with white cardstock and just stick that on the back and then that wouldn't show any of that Copic marker and then to finish off, I'm just adding some tiny iridescent bubbles to the center of the snowflakes. And that's the tags finished for today. I really love how they turned out with that kind of pop-up feature on the front of the tag and then you get the message on the inside. And those penguins are just adorable. Links to the products that I used will be in the description bar here on YouTube. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.